Hello, this is Rory with The Love Chat, and today's topic is the long-distance relationship. Now, this is video number 31. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the channel, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe and hit like so that the channel can continue to grow and reach more people who need the information. Additionally, I have started both a website and Twitter account for updates on things like me taking long breaks like I just had to due to work. Um, and so my website, as you can see in this picture, is www.thelovechat.net, and my Twitter account is at thelovechat. So unpredictable. Now then, moving to long-distance relationships. This has been probably the number four most requested video, and so I thought it's about time we talk about it. Now, questions about long-distance breakups can vary a little bit because there's usually some variable to it. For example, has the entire relationship been long distance or has it been uh, you guys were you guys lived in the same state for about a year and then moved away? I mean, there's just so many variables to this. And so I'm going to try and give some blanket information that will kind of cover every contingency. However, it's important to remember, and you hear it so often, that every situation really is unique and different. And so it can be hard to give exact pinpointed advice. So that's why I really recommend that if you have a complicated situation that's not answered by the what I cover in the videos, reach out to me, and if I can help, I will. So, when somebody breaks up with you via long distance, the first place we usually go to is desperation. Now, you might think, well, duh, it's a breakup. Of course we're going to desperation. Of course we want them back. But in a long distance relationship, it can feel a lot worse because they're not down the street. You can't just go see them. You can't just go talk to them. In fact, getting a hold of them really, at that point, becomes impossible if they don't want to talk to you. But you have to remember that dating and love and relationships is a game of validation. We come together because, yeah, we like the person that we're with and we think that they're attractive, but they validate us in a way that regular, everyday people don't. And so, if somebody's broken up with you long distance, they haven't been feeling validated by you and they haven't been feeling your presence, which of course is hard to do because you don't live near them and it's a situation of life. There's not too much that we can do about the distance other than moving near this person. However, by the time they are ready to break up with you, suggesting that you will move near them will just make you look very weak in their eyes. And so that is not something that I recommend. It won't work. And if it does work, it will only work for a very short amount of time. It shows them that they can walk all over you and you will just let it happen. You'll let it go. So if you have gone through a long distance breakup, please do not suggest that you move closer. Don't suggest that they move closer. You have to understand that the breakup itself wasn't caused just by the distance. The distance didn't help and we can't make light of it, nor can we ignore it. But that's not the only reason that it's happening. And so the big thing to remember here is that you need to maintain your pride you need to maintain your self-respect because that's the only way that this person's going to second-guess themselves. Honestly, guys, whether we like it or not, breakups and relationships and those types of things, getting somebody back, wanting them to crave us again, it's all a matter of the mind. It's all a matter of them realizing that they were enabled to feel a certain way with our presence. You have to remember, and this quote is from Coach Corey Wayne, this is not my quote, that attraction is handled by Mother Nature. And when I heard him say that, that was extremely profound. We don't get to choose who we're attracted to. You look at somebody and either you like them and you think that they're cute or attractive or beautiful or hot or whatever term you want to use, or they're not. From there, it's their personality, their humor, their charm. That's what further attracts you. But it's imposs it's completely possible, rather, to look at somebody, not like them, and still be attracted to them physically. And so when somebody has left you long distance and you're afraid that you're going to have no chance to get them back because you're never going to see them, you have to remember that when they interacted with you, you allowed them, you enabled them to feel a certain way. It allowed them to feel connected with somebody and attracted to somebody. It depends on things like, did you guys argue a lot? Was it a downhill quick breakup or did it happen instantly? The other side of this is, Yes, you did enable them to feel good. You release those good chemicals, the oxytocin, the dopamine, the adrenaline. But at the same time, human beings are a tribal culture. We thrive socially. If we cut ourselves off from social interactions too much, we begin to feel depressed 
depressed, we begin to feel lonely, all those types of things. And so if this person you were dating was never able to see you, then of course, after some time, there's going to be degradation in the relationship, in the strength of the relationship. Now, of course, this is strengthened or weakened by the fact of, have you ever met this person? Do you spend a lot of time with this person in person? Um, have you ever had sex with this person? Because, of course, we know that sex is a bonding action. It makes you feel closer to the other person. Um, the other types of things I really want you guys to think about is, how long has this been going on? If I meet a girlfriend and I'm with her for one year and we live together for one year and then she moves away and I haven't seen her in two months, well, then, you know, maybe the breakup was coming from something that had nothing to do with the distance. However, if you guys had met online and never seen each other, well, of course, this person's going to lose interest eventually. And if there's no plans to meet up, if there's no plans to change the situation, then it's only natural to expect that at some point, this person's going to realize that they're not seeing you. They're not interacting with you. And even though you're there and they can call you or text you or Skype you or whatever, there's still a sense of loneliness. Because human beings, we crave that contact, that connection, touching someone else's skin and feeling like they're there for us. A hug, a kiss, intercourse, anything like that makes us feel connected with another person. And this is part of relationships, whether we want it to be or not. So now, what should we do when we're going through a long-distance breakup? Well, the first thing is, like I always recommend, you need to tell this person that you're not cool with the situation they're putting you in. Because this is the first stand against what they're trying to force onto you. You're not going to be compliant. You're going to say, you know what? I really am not good with the situation that you're trying to place me in. I don't want to be your friend. I don't want this situation. I don't want to break up. So it lays that seed in their mind that they're the ones that are giving up. They're the ones that aren't willing to try and fix whatever needs to be fixed. Okay? So you tell them, I'm sorry, you know, that's not the way I feel. I don't want to just be friends or I don't, I can't just be, um, cordial with you. It's not something that I want. You know, you've been my friend, my lover. And so I can't see you as any other way. And then you tell them that age old phrase, I'm sure you've heard a thousand times on the internet. If you change your mind, give me a call because it tells them that the next time that they contact you, it is understood that they have changed their mind about the situation, right? You backed off, you worked on yourself, you did what you needed to do, the personal work, because ultimately that's what's going to make you feel better, that's what's going to reattract them, that's what's going to reattract somebody better. And it shows them that you do have the strength to stand on your own two feet. Yes, it's going to suck for a while. In other news, water is wet. But as soon as you turn away, work on yourself, remove the attention that you've been giving them, you're going to watch something really cool happen is that they're going to start to miss you and the validation that you gave them. Everybody on earth has these inner fears, these voices telling us that we're not enough in some way or the other. For some people, it's weight. For other people, it's skill level or talent or ability to do their job or whatever. For everybody, it's different. But the point is we seek validation through others. But when you're really good with yourself, when you're just fine, and you don't need that validation from somebody who was not you. It's miraculous how suddenly this game gets easier. Suddenly you're willing to put up with less because you don't need that validation from this person. It really is true that when you are good with yourself and the other person is good with their self, you come together and you share the fact that both of you do not need validation from one another. You have this big, beautiful relationship that lasts forever because it's two equals coming together. Not one person who needs a little validation and the other person who needs a little validation and it's this constant power battle. The second you start screwing up, they don't want you. The second they start screwing up, you're kind of turned off by them. Well, we can break the cycle by just being good with ourselves and that's why I say work on yourself in every way that it needs to be. That's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you'd like covered in the future. Also, if you'd like to do a Skype or email coaching, definitely be sure to email me at thelovechat at gmail.com or visit my website, thelovechat.net. I should also mention that the coaching prices are actually going to go down as a thank you for sticking with the channel while I was unable to be here for a couple of weeks. Keep an eye out this week because there's going to be one new video every day of this week. Until next time.